Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a terminal emulator named Kitty. Now, if you've watched the channel before, you know that my preferred terminal emulator is Termite, and it has been for a long time. And after playing around with Kitty, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be sticking with Termite, so that's just kind of a spoiler alert for you. But Term Kitty does have some interesting features, and it has a very interesting I'll say configuration file so we're gonna jump into that here in just a second but before we do make sure you hit the subscribe button because we do Looney Tunes uh, videos seven days a week on all sorts of FOSS related topics uh, terminal emulators window managers desktop environments we talk about it all on this channel or more specifically I do we also do a podcast once a week called the Linux cast which is where the channel gets its name from so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you don't miss anything. So that being said, let's jump into the uh, documentation for Kitty. So um, it is very well documented for a terminal emulator. But I haven't seen too many out there that are this well documented actually. Um, termite I don't think really is. Um, but I'll be honest, I haven't looked at the Termite uh, documentation in quite some time. I know it's just on GitHub. Um, that really doesn't mean all that much. I think Alacrity does have some uh, documentation like this, but Kitty is very well documented. It's um, it's meant to be a very fast terminal emulator, kind of like uh, Alacrity. I think it's like GPU uh, enabled or whatever. I'm, I'm not, like assisted, I guess. So if you're looking for a fast terminal emulator, Kitty might be the one that you're doing. So let's actually take a look at it now. I will say this, I have gone through and done some customization of the configuration file. Um, so we'll just... By default, you'll just get a black screen with your prompt. That's all you'll get. Uh, I did not want to do that. Um, I also, I've also changed the font and increased the font size. So those are the four things I've done. I've changed the color scheme, I've went through and changed the font and the font size. Um, but we'll we'll take a look at it. So let's, uh, by default, the configuration file is in .config kitty. And if we do an ls, all that's there is the comp file. So if we vim into kitty.conf, and this is what you get by default. It is, um, when I first seen this, I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I had never seen nested or whatever configuration files like this before I in Vim. I'd never seen it before. I was like, how am I supposed to work with that? Uh, it was very confu uh, it was a very confusing five minutes for me. Cause, <laughs> like, I don't understand. How am I supposed to go through? So if, you, if you go on these and just hit enter, enter just takes you down on the line. So how do you do get to that? So the way you do it is actually just go into insert mode. That's how you do it. But you got to remember, now you're in insert mode, so um, I wonder if there's there's probably another key binding in Vim to open those up without going in insert mode. I wonder, because if you, if you, oops, um, if you hit backspace, hmm, I, don't, I don't remember how to close it now. <laughs> this is what I'm telling you. I've never seen this before. It was very confusing. Anyway, so this is um by default everything is commented out. So you have to go through and uh, uncomment things out. Um, and I actually believe that I have to. I think I have to go through and actually remove that colon there too. Or not. So yeah, let's see if that actually works. I'm wondering if. Uh, that's the reason why I didn't show a new new fetch earlier. Anyway, so these are the fonts. There's a lot of stuff you can do here with fonts. Um, more than is I think not completely necessary. I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm a uh, suckless kind of guy. I've made videos before saying that suckless is kind of terrible unless you add some stuff to it. So I want my terminal emulator and window manager for that matter matter to uh, have features. But I don't want it to have too many features, you know, because it goes past being convenient to have a, a, some features to being what Luke Smith would say would be bloat. Um, of course, I don't think he actually uses the word bloat anymore because I think it became meme-worthy, so whatever. Uh, but this looks, I mean, granted, this is just the documentation. You could remove all this stuff, 
if you didn't want to, because most of this here, these paragraphs and paragraphs of text are just explaining what things do. So, um, this is all just for fonts, and I mean that is uh, that is over a hundred and a hundred and almost hundred fifty lines of font stuff. So, and then we have cursor customization, scroll back, which is forty six lines worth. Scroll back does not need 46 lines, it needs two. So let's actually see, take a look and see what the hell they're doing here. Literally, scroll back lines, that's the only one you need. That tells you how many lines you can scroll back in your history and your terminal. You only need that one. What is the rest of this stuff? Uh, scroll back pager, uh, I don't know what that is. Um, number of lines. All right, here's another thing that you'll notice. Sorry. Another thing you'll notice about the configuration file is that unlike normal things the uh, normal configuration files the comment explaining whatever it is explaining comes after the thing that it's explaining so we have we have the command and then we have the the, the explanation of the command command exclamation explanation of the command that is just <laughs> very weird that's not the, that's not the way I would do things I guess but you know whatever um, so this tells you how many lines you, I guess just modify the amount of scrolled by the mouse lines, n modify the amount scrolled by the mouse wheel. If you're going to have, uh, you know, I, uh, grammar is important. Um, touch scroll wheel. I'm assuming this is for the touch pads. I mean, that's cool. I, I, so really, that's not 48 lines worth of stuff. That's, mo that's one, two, three, four lines of stuff with... 40 lines worth of explanation explanation one of those words that I just cannot say worth a damn today explanation um so okay I mean that's not I mean it's not a line it's just really weird same thing with the mouse thing here there's uh, 104 lines that is going to be almost definitely mostly uh, explanation um Yeah, most of the explanation. Like it's really like six lines. Um, focus follows mouse, which is that's a weird setting to have in a terminal emulator. I'm just saying that's something for your window manager. Why does it need this? Um, so let's see. We here we have um, terminal bell. I'm assuming that's for what sound. Yeah. Okay. Um, Window layout tab bar. So Kitty has tabs in it by default, which is, uh, I don't know. I don't really need tabs. It's really weird. <laughs> um, I, I like tabs in other things, like file managers and stuff, but I don't really need tabs in my, th in my uh, terminal emulator. I also don't need multiple windows because I use a window, or you know, like a split window, like you'd have in like Tmux or something. I use a window manager for a reason. I guess I'm just simple that way. Uh, advanced. Well, here's the color scheme. So basically, the color scheme is fairly uh, easy to get around. Um, it's just uh, most of this stuff here is uh, dealing with opacity. Although, oddly, the opacity settings are in two different places. So there's the dynamic background opacity here. I think this has to do more with if you're going to use a background image, which you can do for some inexplicable reason. I'm not sure why you'd want to use a background image in your terminal emulator, but whatever. But there's also above this, there's a place where you can set just regular opacity. I mean, it just seems unnecessary, right? To me, I don't know if anybody who wants a terminal emulator that has a background image. Solid colors are the way to go. Other than that, this is just a standard uh, color scheme that you can get from something like terminal.sexy or something. What I did was I went through and found a term a, a color scheme, and then just copied the terminate one. The terminate one is uses syntax almost exactly like this. You just have to go through and remove the equals signs in between. Uh, so that's really all I did there. Um, so, and then the last one I want to look at is keyboard shortcuts. So this does have some keyboard shortcuts. I don't usually use keyboard shortcuts in my terminal emulator, but it's nice to know that you can get into like Vim mode or I guess um, 
or, or create key bindings to go up lines and repeat uh, commands or something. I don't know. Uh, there's just there's a ton of them here, or quite a few of them here, anyways. So, oh, and there's more. I didn't even notice that. There's more. So, what's the difference between scroll back and scrolling? Oh, th this is actually within in. Okay, so this is nested within the uh, the key binding section. I didn't even know you could do that in Vim. Okay, so you wanna that's the configuration file. So overall, my thoughts on that are it's very very complicated. It's very very long. Uh, it's over thirteen hundred lines long. I bet you you could probably take about a thousand lines away by not having the documentation built right into the configuration file. I, I mean that's a, pref a preference, I guess. I would rather just use a man page. Say if you knew you know you need to do this, just use a man page. Um, but maybe I'm just old fashioned like that. So the last thing I want to do is look at the time. Uh, see if we can definitively say this is faster than something like Termite. So let's uh, cd into our home directory and clear, uh, you know, Command L. I always forget that uh, Control L will actually go through and clear things. I always forget that key binding. So I just use C. I have a key, I have an alias for C that does clear. Anyway, so let's do time neo fetch and fish goes through and uh, you know so these are these are the numbers we're looking at here the, the beginning it was at like 76 milliseconds or so um, and then let's look at termite termite is the one that I use neo fetch oops time neo fetch and <laughs> look at that look at that almost exactly the same uh termite a little bit faster also not gpu accelerated on termite so you don't have to deal with any of that and just for comparison this is this is still termite let's cd into that config termite ls and vim config this is the config file for termite it is 87 lines long uh and some of these are actually fonts. So these could actually all go away. That's in comparison. Now, there's obviously more you can do with Kitty because Termite doesn't have built-in key bindings as far as I know. Uh, I've never actually looked. I don't need them. Um, let's go back to Kitty Kitty. Oops. I actually have to spell things right. Um, let me just zoom in here. Let's do time. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, let's just do a time ls. And that runs uh, in 10 milliseconds. And we'll do time ls. I ran as like 134. <laughs> Interesting. So w at least with this um, command, it was much slower. These are reading as micros and not milliseconds. I don't know which one's smaller. Microseconds? Alright, I'm assuming microseconds is smaller than a millisecond. But I might be completely wrong. Have that completely backwards. I don't know. Um, fish is weird because you. Let's run it again 153 micros, 96 micros. So that's less. Um, termite is faster. I I'm just going to go ahead and say that these are just regular small ass commands that you don't, don't take really any time at all. But termite is faster. So that was a first look at Kitty. My impressions, I I've only played around with it for a little bit before I started recording and whatever you've seen on this recording. Um, my, my impressions are it it's meh. I I why would you use it? Uh, unless you need a lot of configure, unless you need a lot of options for your terminal emulator, that would be a, a, an option. But I think Alacrity is a little bit better. You put together from what I've, you know, the little bit of Alacrity that I've used, and it's probably about as fast. So Termite isn't, or uh, Kitty is not slow, but Termite is still faster. Termite is just faster, people, and I don't understand. So like the likes of Dick, DistroTube and um, uh, Brody Robinson, they all use Alacrity and preach it to high heaven because it's the fastest terminal emulator ever. Termite's faster. 
At least, at least, unless I'm reading that completely wrong, like, which I could be, I suppose. Uh, it's happened before. I've been wrong many times before. So, on that happy note, thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can subscribe, hit the notification icon. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.